pediatric rashes are very common. Parents are quite concerned about them. So let's tackle the top five that we will see in the emergency department. First, when tackling a rash, it's really important to think carefully about the history. Sometimes we get distracted by how a rash looks. And in kids, sometimes we're more likely to see an atypical presentation of something common. So the first rash, the most common rash that we'll see in the ED is the viral infection. And sometimes we'll actually see post-viral reactions as well. Now the classic viral exanthem, the macular papular rash, it's very, very common and there's classic features, but the truth is most of the time we won't know the diagnosis. And viral exanthems, they can present atypically. They can be macular, they can be papular, they can be vesicular, urticarial, petechial. And unfortunately they can be widespread or localized. So that's when your history is important. There are some rashes that we have sort of characteristic features like parvovirus, the slap cheek presentation, or we may see a child who had a fever for a few days, they're pretty well appearing, no clear source, and then they erupt in a rash, that's roseola. Uh, we may see the classic presentation of measles, and this is an important public health diagnosis, right? Rash starts sort of on their scalp, forehead, and then goes down. They have conjunctivitis that kind of looks like Kawasaki's. You want to, when you have a rash, look inside the mouth as well. The, an enanthem can help you confirm the diagnosis. In measles, you may or may not see these complex spots because sometimes it goes away before they even present to the emergency department and have that rash. Hand, foot, and mouth is another enanthem that we see. And particularly, you want to look inside the mouth because it can help reassure you because of the strain that we have right now going through the United States with the Coxsackie enterovirus A6. Uh, this uh, rash can look really impressive. These patients can have bolus lesions. Um, they can be, this is a colleague of mine, it can be pretty extensive with exfoliation. He actually had to call out of work because he had such significant exfoliation. He couldn't intubate, um, so we had to take some time off work. It's pretty impressive. Now, post-viral reactions can occur as well. And these, the thing about post-viral reactions, such as pityriasis or Giannotti crosti, um, and this, what is pictured here, the unilateral lateral thoracic exanthem, um, is that you can have symptoms for several weeks. And that's really important for expectation management of parents. This is gonna be around for a while. And there's not really any great treatment that we know of to make it resolve quicker. So just expectant management. Thankfully, those diagnoses are not all that symptomatic typically. The second common rash is eczema and its complications. Eczema is the most common chronic skin condition. We see it all the time in the emergency department. These poor kiddos can be really, really miserable, really itchy. Uh, treatment is we just want to minimize the exacerbating factors and treat that inflammation. Uh, but we also have to look for super infection. And if you have a child with punched out hemorrhagic lesions, such as in this case, that's eczema herpeticum in a super infection of herpes. And we need to treat that with acyclovir. You can also get viral or fungal superinfections in this area of abnormal skin. So you can get molluscum infection, you can get an exacerbation of Coxsackie in that eczema, uh, the area of where eczema is. The third type of rash that we can have is local infections. And these are super common. The most common thing that we will see in kids is impetigo. Now, impetigo is a very common infection in kids. And we're far more likely to see an atypical presentation of this infection than a more rare infectious disease. And this is caused by staph and strep. Um, here are pictures sent by a colleague who was working with kids in a refugee camp. There's very different versions. This can appear very differently depending on the case. The treatment is topical antibiotics. A mimic of impetigo is a fungal infection. And you can tell the difference between this by its sort of ring-like circular border, and it, it's a little bit crusting and scaling on the outset. The treatment is antifungals. You can also have toxin-mediated rashes, such as in staph scalded skin or in scarlet fever. A child abuse mimic that we sometimes see is perianal strep infections. And this is really just a beefy red, well circumscribed infection, often around the anus or in the perineal area. And the treatment is really with amoxicillin. Often on history, either the child or a close contact will have a history of strep infection as well. 
The fourth rash is contact irritation, the most common of which we see in kids is the infamous diaper rash. We see this all the time. And now this is not an infection, this is contact irritation from the wet contents in that stool. The treatment is to minimize that wet time. You want to give them a barrier cream to sort of uh, uh, prevent the skin from getting denuded and irritated by the wet diaper contents. Sometimes, if the rash has been going on for a while, you can get a super infection of this abnormal skin, such as in this case, in this baby. This baby has a canidal super infection. And usually the history, the rash has been going on for a while, and then you get this beefy red, uh, well demarcated rash with some scalped borders and satellite lesions. Top the treatment is topical antifungals. You can also get an allergic contact dermatitis, and this is really important to ask about on history because it can be tricky. You can have delayed symptoms after a couple of days, and so it may be, you know, the, the contact was two days prior, so you have to ask about that in treatment. And the treatment is really to avoid the trigger. The last rash we're gonna talk about is the rash indicating some sort of systemic process going on such as in this case. This child has sort of bruises, looks like bruises on her legs. Or it could look sort of cherry macular spots. Or more petechial and purpuric, like this patient. This is the rash of Henox schonlein purpura. And this can present often sort of atypically. It may look macular or urticarial initially before it becomes petechial or purpuric. You can have hemorrhagic uh, bulla. You can look actually pretty impressive. You may even have just GU pain or swelling as the only presenting symptom as well. So the diagnosis of Henoch schonlein purpura is a completely clinical diagnosis. There's no laboratory test that you're going to do to confirm this diagnosis. Virtually all patients have palpable purpura. Most patients have arthralgias or arthritis. About half of all patients have abdominal pain. And what we worry about, we worry about the sequelae of renal disease. Patients can develop an IgA nephropathy and even renal failure. So we treat them with pain medication. We screen their urine for renal involvement, but these, all of these patients need PMD follow-up because they can develop renal involvement later on. Another important systemic disease we need to know about and think about anytime we see a child with a rash and a fever, we have to think about Kawasaki's because we can make a huge difference. We can decrease the incidence of coronary artery aneurysms if we make the diagnosis and initiate treatment. These patients have four out of five of the following criteria, conjunctivitis, mucosal changes, extremity changes, cervical lymphadenopathy, and a rash. The rash really can look like anything, right? So consider this diagnosis or you won't make this diagnosis. Uh, you can also have incomplete or atypical Kawasaki's where those kids don't quite have all the criteria or they haven't been febrile for five days. So think about this, this is more common in infants. The treatment is aspirin and IVIG. The last sort of systemic presentation that we have to think about in kids, and unfortunately we make this diagnosis more often um, than we care to, um, but it's leukemia. Leukemia often presents with a rash. It's sort of a nonspecific rash. These patients have often seen their primary doctor a couple times or even come to the ED with very vague malaise. Um, they'll have a little bit of petechial bruising. Uh, they may have bone pain. They may have lymphadenopathy or hepatosplenomegaly. Look inside their mouth for an enanthem or gingival hyperplasia. That's associated specifically with AML. So we've covered the top five rashes in kids. Viral infections and post-viral reactions, eczema and its complications, common skin infections and toxin-mediated rashes, contact dermatitis, and signs of systemic disease. I hope this empowers you and equips you to take care of that next patient with rash. Thanks so much for your time.